Hey guys, how's it going today? It's been a while since I made an actual real video. I put out a few videos here and there, but hey, let's make a video. Check this out. I know you guys have kind of seen a little bit of this guy, but I'm going to go kind of over an update of some of my uh, <clears throat> my South Bend Heavy Tan Restoration stuff I got going on here. I showed you this oh, two, three weeks ago, and I had a few things done on it, but since then I've uh, I've had a break and I've had some time to do some of this stuff so I'm going to kind of go through a few of the things that I've gotten accomplished on this, where I'm at with it, and what i got left to do on it. So let's take a look. Alright guys, so what i got going on here, I think the last time you saw this thing I did not have the gearbox on, the headstock I think was just bare and just sitting here, and I believe that was kind of about it. <clears throat> Since that time I've gotten... Uh, quite a few things done. I got my plates put back on, I got my cover done, and I got these guys done. Uh, but I did get, I got a, I got three lathes to make this one good lathe, and I swapped this cover here from a different lathe, and when I got it on here, it doesn't fit. So I got to take this cover off my other lathe that matched up with this cover, and put it back on here. So this one is going away, and I'm getting a different one. Some of the things you don't know until you actually try it. Um, I got my cups on here, which are great. I put oil in them last night and they're not leaking at all. So I must have must have done it right. <clears throat> I got all my new wicks in there. I originally had a different pulley and spindle assembly for this guy, but what I ended up doing was I got my new lathe, the spindle uh, in the one of the main things that bugs me on some of these old lathes is you put pop the bowl pin in and you get a that bowl pin wears out in there. Well, the one I had here before had a little wear on it, so I just decided to swap the whole thing out. So I got a uh, new spindle, not brand new, but newer spindle, bowl gear, cone, pretty much this whole thing except this outboard uh, gear which is for the specific collet closer that I have for my machine. <clears throat> so that's kind of it on the headstock here. I did get the gearbox done and that was kind of nice to have that all put back together. I don't have the plate done yet, I'm still working on it. But I got that guy all back together, everything's been taken apart completely, re-wicked and I polished up all the little oiler gets here and polished everything up, made it work good the way it's supposed to, and that's that. Uh, I cleaned the lead screw off, that was always fun, getting, I probably spent a good hour cleaning all these threads out, it was no fun. I got a little rough spot here, I'm going to have to polish that once I get this guy running. And let's go around to the other side here and check this out. Alright, so here's my end gears, and, well I did mention I got my back gear put in. And then this is one of the things I did actually yesterday is I got my tumbler assembly finished. And I got the knob polished up here and, and this spring in here on my old machine was worn so I had to replace that. And then I got my, you probably can't see it too well here, but I got my banjo assembly put back on. So now my slide gear works great. Everything's got brand new felt wicks in it so it'll be all nice and oiled up when I get it going. I still need my support bracket back here. Uh, I've yet to paint that guy so there's a little how do you do on that end of this guy. Alright next item of business is I got my <clears throat> whole apron assembly here tore apart. Once again re-wicked and painted and one thing I did is I had my other actually my other assembly is right there. That's a whole other that's the original apron assembly and if you can see right uh, sorry, right there, I had the old knob style for my clutch, and I kind of wanted the lever style. Well, <clears throat> what nobody will tell you unless they've done it before, there is, on the bottom of this, uh, the, the sh housing there, there's a screw for that specific lever style uh, clutch assembly. So instead of messing around with my old one, I just said screw it, and I used this whole different apron assembly, which was in really good shape anyways, off another lathe. So I got that guy to go on there. <clears throat> I have the saddle assembly out in the garage waiting to be painted. I got one coat on, one coat left, so that's that. 
still have to wire my motor up that has yet to be done and my outboard drive pulley there have cracked I still got to replace that yet too there is my cross slide assembly got that guy I'll put it back together that and again the new lathe I had my old lathe, lathe had large dials on it but they were polished and after looking at the polished next to the chrome ones or the satin chrome I decided to go with the satin because to me they seem a little bit easier to read the numbers on there so I swapped the dials out from my uh, old machine to this and these are in really nice shape too so I just kept those all right check that out I don't know if you remember way back when I made a video when I first got this thing and I was heading out to get it scraped but I uh, these lathe plates the ID plates were in not very good shape there were no <clears throat> there's no paint left on them they're pretty tarnished so what I did the other day is I got them painted up and cleaned up and and they looking pretty dang nice now I can show you my, and these are the original plates for the machine, so let me show you the gear selector plate here that I'm almost done with. Alright, here's the gear selector plate that goes on in front of the gearbox, and as you can see, this, there was not much paint left on it either. So what I did, and it was in really nice shape, there's one little tiny nick down there, but other than that, it's in really good shape. And I, <clears throat> I wasn't quite sure how to go about doing this, but I, it actually I painted it and it got pretty good so I did black and then these are supposed to be red on the side and you can see they're still painted so I gotta go back and clean these off and then this will all be you know black and then the red spots and then I'll run a little polish over it and then I'll have my original plate back on there which is nice about these is I think you can get reproductions of them but they're not etched these are etched and the brass is raised on them and I don't even know if you can get brass ones I've seen aluminum ones but some of the guys that are making these now, they like silk screen them, just a plate of brass or a plate of aluminum, and I think that looks kind of chintzy. So I was fortunate enough to have the original plates for mine that were in good shape, and and they should work out pretty good. Alright, so there we go. There's kind of an update on my Heavy 10 restoration. It's been a long time, not a long time, but it's been a lot longer than I would have wanted it to have been, but I'm slowly but surely getting there. Couple things I didn't show you that I have to do yet. Call it closer. I got to strip paint that. Uh, I got a taper attachment. That's gonna be awesome. I got to strip and paint that and fit it. That'll be fun. And what else? I got the tailstock left to do. So other than that, everything's pretty much ready to rock. I got to put a belt on it. Um, you know, my cabinet drawers and my drawer down here I have yet to do, but those are minor things. I'm slowly but surely getting it done. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is taking me about. I don't know, two or three times longer than I would have expected it to have. But anyways, when I get a little bit further along on this guy, which I'm pretty far along now, but I'll make another video and kind of give you an update. And also when I get completely finished with this thing, what I plan on doing is I have a ton of photos from this uh, project and I'm going to go through and probably make just a video slideshow of it and kind of show you guys some of the stuff. I don't know if you can really see what I did, but you can see the transformation of it, I guess. Uh, one more thing, I have a modification to my apron that I'm going to make. It's said in this book here, this guy, if you guys have these, I forget who makes them. Ilium Industrial Services, there's a guy, I think he actually publishes these, but um, that's a good reference for him. Anyways, they show a modification in there for an extra oil on your uh, apron uh, hand wheel. So I'm going to put an extra oil on in there. So that's a video I'm going to be making here hopefully in the next week or two and then I'll show you guys how I did that and uh, what you need. It's a pretty simple conversion to do but it's probably a good idea. I decided what the hell why don't I do it. Anyways enough of me talking! Okay, if you guys liked that, found it somewhat enjoyable, educational, something, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. So and check out, I got a ton of other videos on this stuff, check them out. Uh, it's a good time. Till next time, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. See you guys. Thank you.